Good afternoon and welcome to Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. We are live in Abuja. I'm Hawa Salihu Adama. We start with the legislature today as the House of Representatives has passed the 2021 supplementary budget of 982.7 billion naira. The approved amount is 86 billion naira more than what was forwarded by the executive for consideration. Recall that on Tuesday, June 29th, House Speaker Femi Bajabia Mila read the communication from the executive in which it requested the approval of 895.8 billion naira supplementary budget to be expended on procurements for the armed forces and COVID-19, in addition to making available funds for adjustments of wages in the public service. The House during plenary Thursday also passed the 2021 budget of the Federal Capital Territory estimated at 329.9 billion naira. <coughs> Meanwhile, in a bid to strengthen the bilateral relations between Nigeria and Ghana, Speaker of the Ghanaian Parliament, Alban Bagbin, has assured Nigerians of resolving the trade disputes between the two countries. He gave the assurance while briefing journalists on the outcome of a closed-door meeting with his Nigerian counterparts and some ministers. Mobolaji Mobiring has the report. The visit by the Ghanaian speaker Alban Bagbin to Nigeria is an avenue to explore parliamentary diplomacy in addressing lingering issues between both countries. The two parliaments um, embarked on our parliamentary diplomacy sometime last year, achieved a few uh, good results, and this is a continuation of same. Speaker Ghanaian Parliament expressed his commitment to settling the disputes between Nigeria traders and the Ghanaian authorities. So far, we now put in place a system that will ensure that these things don't reoccur again in the future. Speaker House of Representatives Femi Bajabia Mila commended his Ghanaian counterpart on his determination for a friendly working relationship. Thank you between very much. Nigeria and Ghana. With the outcome of the meeting, it is expected that both nations will resume their age-long relations. From the National Assembly, Mobolaji, Moribiri, NTA News. And still staying with the National Assembly, embracing agricultural practice is one of the ways to support the economic diversification policy of the federal government of Nigeria. President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, reacted this at a public hearing by the Senate Committee on Agriculture and Rural Development on two bills over now to Dayo Ogun Shala. On the growing demand for economic diversification aimed at boosting local food production and create alternative sources of income, President of the Senate observed that the bill on the National Tea and COVID Development Council, as well as the bill for the establishment of the Federal College of Crop Science and Food Technology, Lure in Kaduna, owed huge potential for the country. They are innovative because they are pioneering and are value adding because they could grow the administrative and human capacity frameworks of the agricultural sector. This will impact on the economy aside from enhancing citizen satisfaction and inclusion in governance. Concerned key stakeholders shared similar views. The establishment of this institution will address the following components of the Sustainable Development Goals, SDG 2, SDG 4, SDG 9, and SDG 12. That we are totally in support of this bill, so that we have a school that will train the younger ones. Because a bill that will bring farmers, uh, bring coffee and tea to the limelight, and create employment united of nigerians to embundle our economy and at the same time encourage coordination facilitation tea manufacturing processing and marketing report of the committee is expected to be laid before the plenary for further legislative action from the national assembly dayo gunshola nta news still staying with agriculture to tackle food in security, the Benue state government declared Thursdays and Fridays as work-free days 
to enable civil servants in the state engage in farming activities. Sandra Dowesi Akeme reports that the civil servants are cashing in on the opportunity to boost agricultural activities. My state is an agrarian state that produces almost all varieties of food crops due to the abundance of fertile land. Over 70% of the population depend on manual agriculture for a living. In order to continue with the farming activities and tackle food insecurity, the Benue State Government for the third year running has again declared Thursdays and Fridays as work-free days, where the civil servants took the advantage to attend to their farms. This many are judged to be a good policy that allows many hands on the farm. Now I'm in the farm with my children doing this work, so I am very, very grateful. The problem that we are having in the country concerning food scarcity, that is why he knew very well that we decided to look and look, uh, keep the name Bini State House as food basket of the nation. A visit to some other offices shows that most offices were under lock and key. Only a few civil servants were seen. We want to use the opportunity to drive the agriculture value chain in such a way that we will achieve, at the end of the day, the shortage of food should not be. Compliance at this point is necessary because, as it has been stated, there is need to go back to farm. In Makudi, Sandra Duisi Akeme, NTA News. And it's time to head to our Lagos Network Center for more reports. And Adeola is on standby. It's over to you. Thank you, Halwa. The nation's economy is said to be gaining momentum as the gross domestic product grew by 0.51% in the first quarter of 2021, compared to 0.11% reported in the preceding quarter, a performance that reflects a gradual recovery from 2020 recession. Amaka Owo reports that this was disclosed at a forum organized by the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry on Economic Review. View. Reviewing sectorial performances, the third female president of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry and 23rd president Toki Mabugunje explained that eight sectors reported significant growth driven by the non-oil sector put at 0.79 percent, while 11 sectors contracted in the quarter under review. We note the sustained recovery in the construction and real estate sector supported by improved activities of private and public sector associated with implementation of capital projects. The ICT sector maintained its impressive performance. This was expected given the opportunities created for technology in the post-pandemic era. The cost-reflective tariff appears to have impacted positively on the electricity sector, which actually recorded 8.66%. This was one of the largest and highest sectoral growth performances in the GDP report. The bullish trend in oil prices the chamber attributes to the rise in prices which is above $76 per barrel. This is the say impact of the economy. With the inflation rate at over 17.93%, the chamber also addressed monetary policy development in security, Central Bank of Nigeria export proceed policy. The passage of the Petroleum Industry Bill, the chamber comments the National Assembly by stating that it is expected to unlock investment opportunities in the sector. In Lagos, Samaka O, NT News. While smugglers are devising new antics in evading regular checks both on land and sea borders, operatives of the Nigeria Customs Service are demonstrating the fact that they are miles ahead. This innovation in tackling smuggling yielded positive results as the APAPA command of the service recorded a 61% increase in its half-year report for 2021 compared to 2020. Michael Olaleye reports. Based on the volume of business transactions and import flow at the Apapa Trade Corridor, the port is prone to smuggling activities. This narrative is what the customs stand to change with the enforcement of regulations that will ensure trade facilitation follow due process. Checking through the books, 
the customs was still able to drive revenue to the tune of 78.4 billion naira in the month of June 2021, which clearly shows an increase of over 80% when compared to the 42.4 billion naira collected in the corresponding months under review. Our sustained anti-smuggling campaign and the increase in the level of compliance have resulted in reduction of smuggling activities in the command. From a broader picture, 46 containers were seized between January and June 2021 with duty paid value of 27.6 billion naira. This is just a fraction of the entire 336 billion naira raised within the same period. The export statistic of the command shows that goods was 272.3 billion has been exported through a proper area of command from January to June 2021. The total tonnage of the said export stood at 1.6 million tons with an FOB value of $103 million. The customs therefore solicited the cooperation of port users at ensuring strict adherence to standard operating procedures guiding transactions within the port community. In Lagos, Michael Olaleye, NT News. And talking health, in an effort to continuously promote and sustain cordial civil relations with its immediate environment, the 9th Brigade in Akeja organized a medical outreach to assist members of its host community overcome their health challenges. Lynn Neneke reports that the outreach was part of activities marking the Nigerian Army Day celebration. What most Nigerians can identify with the Nigerian army is fighting war and maintaining law and order. But this time, they are at Onibongo area of Lagos State to provide free health services to the people. It's rare for people to bring this to the community. And they have done well, great opportunity for the whole inhabitants of Onibongo that the whole Nigeria army took this opportunity to treat us freely. According to the Commander 9 Brigade, Brigadier General Landa Soraso, the choice of Onibungu is deliberate because of the huge member of people that would benefit from the exercise. We believe doing so within the community here, they will also be our ambassadors to help us to propagate the good uh, activities that we are embarking upon and by extension, they will also propagate the good part or sites of the Nigerian army as an institution. The exercise is expected to solidify existing relationship, thereby encouraging Nigerians to continue to provide credible information in support of ongoing operations to clamp down on criminal elements. Members of the Nigerian Army Officers' Wives Association also played their backup role as they extended hand of fellowship to widows of the fallen heroes. In Lagos, Lynn Lenake, NTA News. Well, Nationwide will continue because we have more stories, but that will be till after the break to stay with us. Nigerian youths are about the greatest assets the country has at the moment. It is therefore not surprising that the administration of President Mahmoud Buhari is strategically responding to the yearnings of the youth through multiple projects and programs. Youth Entrepreneurship Support Years by Bank of Industry, the youth investment fund by the CBN and several other conditional cash transfer programs. Recruitment of 774,000 social workers, majority of whom are youths and so many other projects that are beneficial to youths directly or indirectly. If the administration can do all this, definitely, with a degree of patience and time, it can achieve more. Nigerian youths must come together to say no to terrorism, no to vandalism, and no to all disruptive tendencies. Hashtag Youth for Greater Nigeria. Pacifying the youths, unifying the nation. Although social media as a channel of communication is inherently harmless, it becomes harmful and damaging when used without discretion and thoughtfulness. Bad social media users spread rumors and fake news without verification. But good social media users stop, reflect and verify information before sharing it. Be a good social media user. Stop the spread of fake news. 
Verify the authenticity of your source and use social media responsibly for a better Nigeria. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, in collaboration with the National Orientation Agency. Your kids are smart. Your kids are creative. Your kids are business savvy. Now they get a chance to prove it and maybe even start their own business. The goal of the Emerging Africa competition is to raise a new breed of industrialists. Upload a video of your child pitching a business idea or showcasing an existing business to get a chance to enter the three-week boot camp where final winners will emerge. Admission is free. Age range is 10 to 17 years. Entry is open June 28, 2021 and ends July 17, 2021. Bootcamp opens August 8th and ends August 28, 2021. For more information, visit our website www.tacompetition.org, our Facebook page, TA Competition, our Instagram, The Emerging Africa. For inquiries and sponsorship, call 0803 545 8855 or 0817 678 8284. Thanks for rejoining us. It's nationwide and it's now to oil and gas. The petroleum industry bill, when signed into law, will pave way for greater transparency and accountability in the oil and gas industry as well as attract more foreign direct investments. Guests on NTA's Good Morning Nigeria, who made this assertion, also gave perspective on how the bill will enhance industry regulations and productivity. Over now to Joseph Hussein. The petroleum industry bill, PIB, took almost decades before passage, but guests on Good Morning Nigeria converse proper harmonization of continuous issues before executive assent. The company will be dead on arrival if it goes as a state decision to go and explore. So you have got to have technical and commercial decisions driving a decision to go to a particular place to explore. We have the Anambra Basin, mm -hmm. we have the Dahomey Basin, mm -hmm. which is in Lagos, mm -hmm. we have the Calabar Basin. Mm -hmm. Even in the Niger Delta itself, there are areas that are still need to be explored, es es explored for oil. So the 30% profit oil is not only going to be domiciled in frontiers in the north. President of Nigeria Association of Energy Economics, Professor Yinka Omoribe, however, stresses that the voice of a few who frustrates policies that will impact positively on the masses should not delay implementation. On the provision of 30% of profit accruing from oil and gas operations for the exploration of oil in the frontier basins, the guests argue that it will lead to growth of the industry across the country. In Abuja, Joseph Utsen, NTA News. The Nigeria Civil Society Situation Room has noted the efforts of the National Assembly to conclude considerations and pass the Electoral Bill 2021. Timothy Yusuf reports that the Situation Room is, however, deeply concerned about the proposed provision of Clause 50, Subsection 2 of the Bill. Proposed provision of Clause 50, Subsection 2 of the Electoral Bill states that voting at an election shall be in accordance with the procedure determined by the Independent National Electoral Commission, which may include electronic voting, provided that the Commission shall not transmit results of elections by electronic means. Over the years, election reports of several, you know, uh, uh, of several accredited observers have identified the collation process as a weak link in elections. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Civil Society and other election stakeholders situation room explains have advocated for improvements to the electoral process, particularly the use of technology in elections to improve efficiency and transparency. Another issue of concern situation room says is the significant increase made to the limits for election expenses in clause 88 of the draft bill. 
The North Central Progressive Group has also asked Nigerians not to despair but expect that the National Assembly will deliver a credible amended electoral bill that would address the yearnings of all. And we have remarkable hands, remarkable hands, people who have, who have you know, impacted this country at different levels. The group is urging the citizenry to unite for their common good ahead of the next round of elections in Abuja. Timothy Yusuf, NT News. The African Union Country Review Mission has commenced sectoral consultations for the validation of Nigeria's self-assessment report in the second pair review process. The AU mission was at the National Institute for Security Studies as well as the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons in Abuja, where homegrown solution to African challenges was canvassed. Mitairi Ikben tells us more. The National Institute for Security Studies carried out harmonization of data obtained on Nigeria's second peer review, hence this visit by the African Union mission to validate the country's self-assessment report. Speakers here note that terrorism and lately the COVID-19 pandemic have slowed down social economic development but stress that Africa's peculiarity should reflect in solutions to global challenges. The idea of peer review is very good, and between African countries, I think it's excellent because in that way we come from the same background, we come from the same context, the same challenges. This is a fundamental belief that we share with everybody, not only in Nigeria, but here in the whole of Africa. And I'm glad that the most populous country in, the, in, the, in Africa is, is adhering to that and is propagating that. At the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons, the Federal Commissioner is optimistic that the national policy on internally displaced persons awaiting Federal Executive Council approval will aid humanitarian activities in the country. I'd like to congratulate His Excellency President Mawad Buhari on conducting this review, being one of the few African countries that have gone ahead to, to do their second review. This report will give a room for, uh, for strengthening and a more enabled system structures and even the people. The AU mission was also at the EFCC headquarters where the chairman, Abdurashid Bawa, promised to support the African peer review mechanism to promote good governance in the country. For this all important exercise, as we have been directed by the government of His Excellency President Muhammad Buhari to give you all the necessary cooperation. For this all important exercise, of African peer review uh, mechanism process on good governance. Nigeria's second peer review is anchored on four thematic areas of social economic development as well as corporate governance. In Abuja, Mitaire, Ikben, NTA News. Holders of Boa Cement are smiling all the way to the bank with the announcement of a 19.4% increase in profit after tax for the year 2020 financial year. This was disclosed at the company's annual general meeting in Abuja. Musa Abubakar completes the report. It's the end of another financial year for Boer Cement. And this annual meeting is reconvened to assess the performance of 2020 financial year. Annual report presented to shareholders indicates that revenues grew by 19.30% to 209.4 billion naira compared to 175.5 billion naira in 2019, with production volumes rising to 5.1 million metric tons. The company also recorded 19.4% growth in profit after tax to 72.3 billion naira and 19.6% rise in earnings per share to 2 naira 14 kobo from 1 naira 79 kobo as at 2019. The company have declared a dividend of 2 naira 2.067 per share which is a wonderful achievement to everyone of us. Very fantastic. My expectation is they should do more than this. They should produce more. We already you know, uh, have done uh, much better for the half, first half of this year than what we did last year. And we expect that to, you know, to continue. The two naira and 67 cover approve as dividend and efforts to expand production, shareholders believe, is a sign of better things to come. In Abuja, I am Musa Abubakar, NTA News. 
The Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS, has appointed some commercial banks as agents to recover the sum of 1.8 trillion naira from accounts of Mesos Multi-Choice Nigeria Limited and Multi-Choice Africa. This was contained in a statement signed by the executive chairman, Mohamed Nani. The statement confirmed that the decision to appoint the banks as agents and to freeze the account was as a result of the group's continued refusal to grant the FIRS access to its servers for audit. FIRS noted that the group's performance does not reflect in its tax obligations and compliance level in Nigeria, despite the country's contribution of 34% to the total revenue for the multi-choice group. And it's time to join Mohammed in our Medjugorje Network Center for an update on IDPs. It's over to you. Thank you, Hawa, and welcome to Medjugorje. Bruno State Governor Babagana Umara Zulum has directed profiling of 3,000 families to be provided with packages of farm inputs to enable them to return to farming activities in Damasak headquarters of mobile local government area of Borno State. He gave the directive during a visit to the community in the fringes of Lake Chad in northern Borno. Mohamed Guni reports. In January this year, Governor Zulum had supervised distribution of seeds, fertilizer, chemicals, water forms and 5,000 naira to each of the 1,200 irrigation farmers, many of whom are harvesting crops such as onions, rice and pepper in Damasak. During the visit, Governor Bagana Umara assessed progress made by the 1,200 irrigation farmers where he expressed satisfaction with what he saw and commended the farmers for their commitment to agriculture, which resulted in bumper harvest recorded this year. The farm inputs to be provided to the 3,000 families in the second phase of the exercise include improved seeds, fertilizer, water forms, and chemicals to prepare them for both rainy season and irrigation farming, as the farmlands will be secured by the Nigerian military. Each of the 3,000 families are made up of at least six persons, implying that at least 18,000 persons will be benefiting in the exercise. And we want to ensure that internally displaced persons that have returned to the return from Niger are given priority. The governor said, he expected the 3,000 families to safely cultivate crops on hundreds of hectares of lands like those used by the first batch of farmers to cultivate rice, pepper, and onions through the state government's start-up packages with a pledge to render more support to enhance socioeconomic activities in the town. Professor Zulim commended the military and others for their support to the farming communities in line with the presidential directive to ensure protection of farmers on their farmlands. Damosek, which was famous for massive agriculture, suspended farming activities for nearly six years following Boko Haram's occupation in 2014, a situation that threatened food security in the area. In Maiduguri, Mahmoud Goni, NTA News. Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development has organized stakeholders' engagement on enumeration of beneficiaries and scaling up of national homegrown school feeding program in Borno State. The program is part of the federal government's initiative to address social challenges in the country. Miamuna Garba reports. The National Homegrown School Feeding Program was designed as a multifaceted intervention to drive school enrollment up and local production of food. It also aims at the provision of one nutritious meal to all pupils in public primary schools in classes 1 to 3. Borno State Governor Professor Babagana Omar Zulum, who was represented by the Chief of Staff at while plugging off the stakeholders' engagement on enumeration of beneficiaries and scaling up of the program in the state, commended the federal government's initiative, saying it enhances teaching, learning, and enrollment of pupils in Borno, as education is one of the topmost priorities of his administration, considering the lion's share being allocated to it in the budget. This intervention has gone down to the targeted groups and is yielding great results. Hence the need to be sustained for upliftment of education in Borno State. Representative of Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, who is also the zonal coordinator of the program for Borno, Yobe and Bochi State, Ali Grema, disclosed that the ministry is looking at scaling up the numbers of pupils benefiting from the program as directed by the president so that the special intervention will improve the lives of millions of Nigerians. Over 9 million pupils benefit from one three meal a day 
during school time nationwide and we have the mandate to reach an additional 5 million people in, in 2023. Focal person of the program in Borno, Aisha Waziri, and the consultant Mohammed Alpa, while presenting an overview of the program, assured that every child will be enrolled, including head teachers, cooks, and parents, stressing that the federal government is trying to cushion the burden of sending children to school. In my degree, my Munagarba, NTN News. Those are the stories from my degree, and it's back to Hawa in Abuja. Many thanks, Mohammed. And here in Abuja, though, President Muhammad Buhari felicitates with His Royal Highness Oba David Olajide Omisore, the Olu of Ayekbe Olode in Ocean State, as he clocks 90 years. The president urges the monarch, his family, and subjects to give glory to God for the gift of longevity, noting that such milestone can only be attained through the grace of the Almighty while saluting the Oba for a lifetime of service to community, society and the nation, President Buhari prays that God gives the monarch the grace to serve further in good health and sound mind. Traditional rulers in Imo state are collaborating with the state police command to ensure community participation in the fight against criminality. Beatrice Anyam brings us details from a meeting to that effect in Owere. Between the Imo State Traditional Institution and the Imo State Police Command aims at improving the security situation in the state through community policing. Briefing journalists after the meeting, which was held behind closed doors, the chairman, Imo State Traditional Institution and Community Policing, Ezimane Lokeke, says they shared security intelligence with the State Commissioner of Police, who was represented by the Assistant Commissioner of Police, Ben Osuji. He thanked the governor for his efforts in ensuring that peace is restored in the state. We thank the commissioner of police for his effort in tackling the security in the state. We should be working under synergy. Deputy Chairman, Imo State Traditional Institution, Warizun, as a David Osawa, and the chairman, Ohaji Ibama Traditional Institution, as Emmanuel Aso say, it has become imperative for such meetings to be held on a regular basis. Our target is to make sure that the crime stops, like the governor has already started it. It is really important for us to be holding this kind of meeting with them to in synergy so that we, we interact, share security issue, uh, intelligence together. Although the representative of the Imo State Commissioner of Police, Abutiyaro, declined comment, the meeting was generally described as fruitful. In Oweri, Beatrice Anyam, NTA News. To politics now, the All Progressives Congress Youth Forum has cautioned APC stakeholders in Zamfara State to guard against thwarting the party's efforts of reconciliation. Saliu Abdullahi Gwanara reports. As critical and strategic partners in the rebuilding and repositioning process of the APC, the youth wing is concerned about the renewed efforts by some of the party's stakeholders who are allegedly working to reverse the progress recorded, particularly in Zamfara State. The group acknowledged that APC had enough of intra-party challenges that affected its victory in some states during the 2019 general elections and expressed readiness to ensure the supremacy of the party's constitution. As young people of the party, we will no longer take any untoward action against the party interest and to note that no single politician should feel indispensable. Rules are rules. This party was built on a foundation based on the rules. A party is built on consensus, acceptability of the majority rule. So if things don't go your way in a party, you go with the majority. And we would resist any attempt to destroy the gains this party have made in recent times. The APC Youth Forum advocated for synergy among members through respect for the leaders of the party at all levels in Abuja, Salihu Abdullahi Gwanara, NTA News. Meanwhile, residents of Magami District in Guso, local government area of Zamfara State, have staged a peaceful rally 
to express their support for the ongoing military operations in the area, saying the development has given them confidence to actively engage in this year's wet season farming activities. The demonstrators who moved with placards carrying various inscriptions also protested against any attempt to relocate the troops. Haliru Mohamed Umaru reports. Magami district, located about 50 kilometers away from Gusaudi Zamfara state capital, was hitherto one of the areas worst hit by banditry, kidnapping, cattle rustling, and other forms of insecurity. However, the recent deployment of a new commanding officer of a combined military team and reinforcement of the troops operating in the area brought instant relief to residents owing to the successes being recorded in the fight against criminality. This informed the decision of the residents to come out en masse and demonstrate their appreciation and solidarity to the military for what they describe an opportunity to return to their farmlands, which were hitherto abandoned due to fear of attack. We are highly appreciated with your effort in destroying bandits and banditry in this area. We have no words to choose in order to express our gratitude and our satisfaction, total support uh, to what you are doing. And I still want to promise you that the Nigerian military of today is determined to solving the problem of insecurity in the country. The demonstrators, however, urged authorities concerned not to relocate the military operatives, stressing that their presence and effort is yielding positive results and should be allowed to flush out criminals from the area in particular and state at large. This development, according to analysts, is expected to serve as morale booster for the military troops in not only Magami District, but Zamfara State and by extension, the northwestern region. In Gusau, Halir Muhammad Umar, NTA News. And our Port Harcourt Network Center is next with Gabrielle as our guide. Hello and welcome to Port Harcourt. A total of 64 persons have been mobilized in River State as independence monitors for the Federal Government National Social Investment Program, NSIP. Kingsley Major reports that independent monitors are to track the four components of the program towards actualizing set objectives. His reports. Chigozi Okere is among the 64 trained independent monitors selected in River State who received their engagement letters and mobile devices. They are to provide feedback mechanism for the National Social Investment Program, a vision of President Muhammad Buhari to lift 100 million Nigerians out of poverty. But the federal governments have done a lot concerning this program. So I'm ready to go to the fields, various villages, to monitor this program to the best of my knowledge. I'm fully prepared to do this program to improve my portal to the development of, of Nigeria. Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Disaster Management, Sadia Umar Farouk, represented, said the essence of the independent monitors is to provide field performance reports for the four components of the program and in turn help the ministry appraise challenges and successes recorded. When President Muhammad Buhari came up on board in 2015, this program cropped up to address the social needs of this country. Coordinators of the program in River State are delighted with the positive impact so far. This assignment is a give back or it's a social welfare package that government has for the masses. Right, we have completed registering in about 17 local government areas in River State. As of today, we have over 300,000 persons in the poor and vulnerable register. The independent monitors are to deploy a social investment monitoring application to drive the process in Port Harcourt, Kingsley, and Marjorie, NTA News. The federal government is committed to meeting the nutritional needs of about 13 million vulnerable peoples by 2023 through the homegrown school feeding program to reduce hunger and malnutrition as well as generating employment and wealth. To this end, the federal government through the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs is in Cross River States to engage stakeholders and enrollment of beneficiaries of the program. Ode Alenyo tells us more. 
Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development represented by Sunday Oku, Zonal Monitor of the School Feeding Program, is calling on stakeholders from other government agencies to work jointly to verify existing beneficiaries of the program with updated records for effectiveness, transparency and accountability during a meeting with the State Deputy Governor to kickstart the exercise in the state. The federal government is not interested in seeing citizens stay out of school because of poverty level. There are so many programs that the federal government has in place for the poor of the poorest. The state deputy governor, Professor Ivara, so while commending the federal government for initiating the program, urged those saddled with the responsibility of piloting the affairs of the program to live up to expectation. I'm excited that there is some additional five million persons being added to this program. Cross Civil State Commissioner for Humanitarian and Social Welfare and an independent consultant expressed optimism that the team would deliver on its mandate. Present at the meeting were representatives from the National Bureau of Statistics, Ministry of Education, National Orientation Agency, National Population Commission, National Youth Service Corps, as well as Universal Basic Education Board. In Calabar, Ode Alenyo. That's our beat from Port Harcourt. Another break beckons thereafter. Nationwide continues with our Kaduna Network Center. Stay tuned. Shaping public opinion by media as agents of change in the face of security challenges tops agenda for discussion at the combined quarterly meeting of the Broadcasting Organizations of Nigeria, Bonn, Northwest Geopolitical Zone. Haruna Mohammed reports. Like other parts of the country, Northwest Zone is experiencing peculiar security challenges in armed robbery, banditry and kidnappings. There are other issues of concern on gender-based violence and destitution. To speak to issues, the meeting chose broadcast perspective on tackling security challenges in the Northwest. Former Director General of NTA, Mohamed Ibrahim, and Special Advisor to the Kaduna State Governor on Media and Communication, Muyuwa Adekese, broadcast industry should bridge people and government in tackling security challenges. There are better alternatives than kidnapping. The government has introduced so many policies affecting young people. Uh, both the states, the federal government, have all those policies. We need to enable our people okay, to understand and support the correct measures. Speakers including Bon Chairman, Sir Ibrahim and Zonal Chairman, who is the Managing Director of Kaduna State Media Corporation, Ibrahim Ismail Ahmed, as well as others, agree peace is needed for development to thrive. There are processes. You have to check double check you go to your editor he will check and also make sure that you have balanced your story and the rest of it sensitizing the young people that are involved engaged in this banditry we can convince them that that's not the best way forward for them through drama through documentary through production of jingles we are talking about you know a region that is highly affected by issues of banditry, kidnappings, and so many other uh, security challenges. So for the media uh, to talk about this is very important, even if it means agreeing 
to discourage the circulation of fake news. In Kaduna, Haruna Mohammed, NTA News. Nigerian Television Authority pledges commitment towards sustaining content production and programming to promote unity and progress of Southern Kaduna. From Kavanchen, Lois Apollo reports. With growing need towards promoting peaceful and harmonious coexistence, stakeholders like you said, Nigeria Early Recovery Initiative, NERI, is partnering with NTA Kafanchan to achieve the vision. To remove challenges on way to progress, NERI is assisting with giving the station facelift across areas of infrastructure and equipment. We want to build social cohesion. So that's what Zaman Lafia Terry, I think that means living together peacefully. So we want to see people live together peacefully. We're tired of Kaduna as a boiling pot. Kaduna is the center of excellence. Well, thank you for being partners in doing in community television and in promoting peace in a, in a, in Jamal Lokagoma in Southern Kaduna as a whole. As brothers and sisters, as communities who have been living together for several hundreds of years, uh, you know, we should continue to cherish that our togetherness so that peace permeates everywhere. And when you have peace, I mean, you have rest of mind. Renovation work is expected to be completed this August. From Kafanchan, Lois Apollo, NTA News. And that's it from here. It's back to Hawa in Abuja. Thank you very much. And back in Abuja, a federal high court sitting in Abuja has granted bail to the former registrar of the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board, Jam Dibu Ojerinde, for the sum of 200 million naira with two sureties. The presiding judge, Justice Obiora Eguato, gave the ruling after hearing the bail application in the matter. Omenka Marachiku completes the report. The two short fees must reside in Abuja, with one being a professor in a federal university. Part of the bare conditions is that the defendant, Dibu Ojerinde, should deposit his international passport at the registry of the court. Dibu Ojerinde is standing trial on 18 count charge bordering on alleged diversion of public fund during his tenure as the registrar of the National Examination Council and CHAMP before the ruling counsel to the defendant Peter Oloroshola San informed the court of the bail application that had been filed before it. However, the prosecution counsel objected to the bail application based on the alleged breach of bail condition that was given to Ojerinde when he was in the custody of the ICPC. The matter has been adjourned to 22nd and 23rd July 2021 for the commencement of trial in Abuja, Umenka Marchuku, NTA News. Financial autonomy for the judicial arm of government has been on the front banner. Issues bothering on implementation and challenges at all levels dominated discussions at a virtual meeting of the Nigerian Institute for Advanced Legal Studies Founders Day. Again, it's over to Omenka Amara Chika. With the conviction that everyone who approaches the judiciary will get justice, it is believed to be the hope of the common man to ensure that justice is not delayed. This arm of government has been pushing for financial autonomy. Though President Muhammad Buhari, the administration has provided a leeway to ensure compliance, but the desired result is yet to be achieved. To liberate for a better fiscal autonomy is the reason for this discussion. I see no reason why state governors cannot amend their existing laws to reclassify magistrates and other actually lower court actual judicial officers, you know, as judicial officers. You know, away from actually, you know, being typical civil servant. So we are talking about holistic uh, reform of the judiciary in terms of physical autonomy that extend that physical autonomy to judges as magistrates as well as those people who support the judges. Parts of the presentation includes expansion of the definition of judicial officers periodic review of packages of judicial officers, among others. In Abuja, Umenka Marachuku, NTA News. Still staying with judicial matters, four persons have been arraigned before a, fed, a high court of the Federal Capital Territory sitting in Jabi. 
The four defendants were arraigned on a four-count charge by the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons. The defendants who pleaded not guilty to all the four counts are standing, are standing trial for alleged surrogacy by recruiting a 22-year-old girl, an offense under the NAPTIC law in Nigeria. You don't know for the avoidance of that, what is that surrogacy? It's luring a young woman to take or carry pregnancy on a son, which is not supposed to be for, for her husband, recruiting with an influence or for purposes of giving her money. The, the defendant has been granted bail as a matter of constitutional right. The case has been adjourned to the 22nd and 23rd of September 2021 for the prosecution to open its case. The Executive Secretary National Commission for Persons with Disabilities, James Lalu, has commenced an advocacy for easier access to mortgage and housing facilities for persons with disabilities. The executive secretary also expressed concern that property developers do not factor the needs of persons with disabilities in their building plans. Gufan Shaji tells us more. Most building projects in a fast developing city like Abuja are constructed to meet certain targets. These sprawling and often expensive buildings often meet the taste of would-be clients. But guess what? A project like this would hardly get the approval of a person living with physical disability. The reason is not far-fetched. These structures are constructed without regards to the special needs of persons with disabilities, which heightens the already existing challenge of access to affordable housing for persons with disabilities. One of the major cry from our community today, since we are Zoom office, is housing. That is why I pick it personally to make sure that we partner and get into the necessary federal government housing programs. This particular inspection tour of development sites by the executive secretary was made to two federal government-assisted building projects around the Lube and day day axis of the federal capital territory. Our first step here, we want to see how we can be able to partner with them on rent to own business. So persons with disabilities who are working, we will start with those who are working. Once we start with those who are working, we will extend it to those who are not working but have some reliable source of income. James Lalu is hoping that the developers would hearken to the appeal of persons with disabilities and adjust the building plans to cater for those with special needs. In Abuja, Wufan Shaji, NT News. And sports is next. <laughs>